Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Horse Geeks podcast, where we look at horses and riders from the inside out. I'm Kirsten Nelson, professional horse trainer, and my basically co-host, Deborah Mero, <laughs> certified <laughs> Alexander Technique instructor. I'm just not good at like organizing other guests. So I super appreciate that you meet with me week after week to do that this. That I show up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I am like, I'm kind of like, the, I'm texting you. Hey, where's the invite? Come on. I know. And I'm just not like, I love doing this podcast. I, I love, do too. I love, and hopefully you guys listening like it as well. And, you know, it helps sometimes when we get a little love back, like some thumbs up, some comments, some yeah. subscribers. Questions would be great. Questions would be great. Curiosity going. is great. But I, I love doing this with you anyways. Yes, we, we so were going to do it anyways. <laughs> because I'm not that organized to get a whole bunch of different guests on the podcast. I go, this is just something I love to do with you. So when I do get other guests, it's fun, but it's also more work. So I kind of <laughs> don't always get around to it. Oh, good. I'm less work. I love it. You're no work. <laughs> so anyways, we digress. Um, so today's topic, looking at things from the inside out, is I thought we would do something about horse tails. And I'm thinking like a T -A -I -L -S, title. T-A-I-L-S, not the other horse tails. Or like last time we talked about some visual ways that we could start uh -huh. to look at the use of the axial skeleton without having x-ray vision, just sort of you know, looking like putting tape on the hindquarters, which way does the horse put the saddle during groundwork, that kind of thing. Right. And this is a little bit of a carry on from that. But I get asked a lot. Um, there's a lot of horses that carry their tail crooked. And right. so I thought we could call it horse tails tell tails. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that a little bit too cheesy? That's that, I'll go with it. I'll go with it for today. Well, it, and what I mean by that is, um, it is information. It yeah, is information. and I, I, I question it. You know, um, you know, I've got a, I've got a couple of stories of horses around tail posture um, or tail use, tail use that I question. You know, am I missing something? Is the horse trying to tell me something? Well, one of the first things I learned about horses like what different uses of the tail can mean is a horse that is like off the charts terrified mm. the tail will actually bend into a backwards j shape so the horse's I tail visualize that so what it it's sticking out instead of going around the butt no from the tail head up at top of the hindquarters uh -huh. because let me take a step back. The tail's not all hair, right? That's a good point. People need to know it's an extension of the spine. It is the coccyx. Yeah, it's extension of the, it's a continuation, maybe is a better word than extension. Right. It's a continuation. So pop quiz, we're both going to fail. At least I'm going to fail. Oh. How many coccyal bones does a human have? And how many coccyal I bones have, does a horse have? It varies. I know it varies, but it's yeah. like, I, it's not very many in the human, like maybe five or six, maybe yeah. three or four. And right. in the horse, it's like 13 to 20. So and I don't know. that's kind of important. I mean, are we, are we not? It's kind of like the thing that people don't connect their pelvis to their torso. They're not, you know, are we truly following the whole spine? Right. And where it goes. Well, and I have my helper here who loves my Zoom meetings, right? <laughs> and even if we look at a cat's tail, if right. you feel the tail, it's bone all, all the, way, the down, way, right? All the way to the tip. And so, <laughs> yes, thank you for demonstrating. She goes, yeah, I'm not coming back. So a horse's tail doesn't, like the bones don't go all the way to the tip. If we look at most, if a, if the horse's tail goes down past the hocks, the bony part of that isn't going to really pass maybe the bottom of the hindquarters. Right. 
right? So we can feel under the tail hair where we find skin and bone. Right. And so what a backwards tail is, is when the tip of the tail, like from the end of the tail at the end, the very the, end of the, the very bony, end of the tail, okay. <clears throat> the very end of the bony part of the tail, because okay. there's a lot of hair below that. It's when the tip of the bony part flips back up like a J. Okay. Now I know what you're talking about. Okay. And what that does wow. is it kind of lifts the tail hair a little bit, but it doesn't curl the tail hair. It's not like a cat's tail is bone all the way through. And a horse's tail, we can think of it as bone for about, I don't know, maybe a third of the tail, roughly. Right. And so somewhere higher in the tail, we'll actually see the bony tip of the tail kind of poke through the hair and lift upwards. Right. And so they call that a backwards J, which is what the tail's doing. It's stiffening so hard. Wow, instead that's of amazing. The, Instead of the bones hanging straight down where they should, they curl back upward. And that is a terrified horse. Terrified. Yeah. And you know what I've noticed is horses that, and this is just my own horses and horses I've come in contact with here, is when they're not balanced, I can't pick up the tail. It's like glued Clamped. to the horse you go to grab it and they almost go into startle yeah yeah whereas my horses you know my two girls I can pretty much lift their tails and it's no problem but I've been testing horses that I don't know maybe they're just scared nervous I don't know but I, I find that I very look, interesting I look at it when people ask me about horse tail use if it's not that backwards J it can mean mm -hmm. a lot of different things right um <clears throat> There's also probably the second most important use of the tail that I learned about after the backwards J, which is pure fear, was when horses start to engage the hindquarters and flex the, the spine upward, the very top of the tail head, right where it meets, where the tail meets the hindquarters, mm -hmm. will gently sort of lift an arc, and they call it cupping, like a the t very, very top of the tail really? sort of gently cups upward. And so I wonder, I'd have to look, we'd have to go back to that research paper of what muscles are, because we did, we'll have to go back to that paper, the muscle use, whether it's, they were stability muscles, remember down there? I wonder if. Well, I yeah. remember we'll have to go back over that because the most interesting yeah. thing out of that research paper was there's only two muscles in the horse's body where the muscle fiber type was right. entirely the type for stabilizing. Stability and not Stability. mobility. Not I would like to revisit that at some point. Yeah. And I know it was one of those muscles, like it, it had four letter abbreviation, but it was yeah, like- it was long. <laughs> yeah. And it had to do with the, I know sacrocaudalis was in there. So I know it had to do with like the tail side of the sacrum. But if we think of the tail as an extension of the spine, mm -hmm. I go, the spine isn't really complete, the skeletal part until about at least a third down our horse's fluffy tail. And so when we talk about engagement and we're talking about the use of the pelvis and the pelvic relationship to the sacrum, I go, the coccyx is just a continuation of the sacrum. Right. So even though that connection point, that joint of the sacroiliac joint is between the upper part of the pelvic bones and the bones of the sacrum, that coccyx is sort of just an extension of that. And so yeah. whatever's going on, because it's the lumbar, spine, sacrum, and coccyx, at least, well, I never really include coccyx. I should say the lumbar, spine, sacrum, and pelvis really almost act as one unit. Right. And, and I don't know if that's true in humans, but it's very true in horses. So if there's lateral instability, it's not just happening in the bones of the pelvis. 
It's happening through the sacrum and the lumbar. And what I see is because maybe that stabilizing muscle is just above the tail head that we talked about, um, that I see horses put their tail up and off to one side. They sort of curl the tail and hold it yes. to one side. And yes. that almost always, not always, but almost always happens when there's a rotation or lateral bend or what we're, we talked about as a lateral disengagement. So yeah, if there's... That, I've got a couple of, I mean, my big mare years ago when I had her down in Florida and working with her, hers was always to the right. And we figured out she had like a double rotation in her spine. Her thoracic spine was rotated one direction and her lumbar were rotated the other with the tail offsetting it all. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. And it's normal now um, with the, the groundwork and the balance work. I don't have that problem with her anymore. No. And I've had horses like taking video. I'll watch a horse play with the tail. And as I'm feeling the back changing and the hindquarter engagement changing, becoming more stable, I can watch that tail. Some horses will flip it back and forth a few times. Some will flip it to the other side for a little while, but in one ride, it will settle in the middle. And that's so funny because that's what I look for in my big mare after I either long line or ride. <laughs> I consider that my success gauge. <laughs> yeah. Like, is she still holding it to the right or did we get it back to the middle? That's all. I'm always looking at that. Just well, that's, and that's my key. That's why this is a little bit of a continuation of the last episode is because the tail can be sort of a visual indicator. True. Right. And so when people say, oh, my horse just holds its tail off to the right all the time. I go, well, maybe you have a chronic rotation issue. Right to the left right and I'd be looking at like we said where it's putting the saddle you know exactly yeah but I find most often the tail will go to the the side of the body that's tighter muscularly which means that the skeleton and the body weight is going the opposite direction so when the spine sort of tilts or rotates say too far to the left then we're going to, the horse is going to be overloading the left legs, usually the front left leg, but is going to be contracting all the muscles on the right side of the back and hindquarter. So that's like their stabilizer to that's, make, so, so it, that, that they don't, don't fall don't over too far. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So I don't fall over. And I find the tail will tend to go to that tighter right side in that case, mm. but not always. It's, I mean, bodies are a little bit of a wild card, so you can't say it, it's Well, that's a, true. It's, it's individual. Right. And sort of like we talked about tracking up, it's not entirely untrue, but I don't find it a um, reliable indicator of right. balance, right? And the tail's a little bit that way to me too. I go, and mane flipping, like horses that have Oh, that's split another manes. one, isn't it? The mane half and half or the mane's on one side. Yep. What is interesting is how hair responds to changes of muscle tension. Right. Right. And so I can't look at it like I've heard, oh, if the horse's mane is split here, then that's exactly where the problem is in the back. It's a mirror reflection. And I go, hmm. I haven't found that to be the case. Like I have not experimented. I mean, I've looked at it, but I've never, you know, my hair, I was trying to think of it with people. It's like, well, I've got cowlicks here and here and they don't have anything it? to do with your back. I was like, does that affect my movement? I don't know. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of truth. Like one of my horses, um, after I got him, the first time I went to cut his mane, because I don't pull anymore. I use a I don't knife. Either. And um, it, he was terrified. I guess he had a bad experience with his mane being pulled. And if you touched his mane hair, like you Aww. were going to cut it, he just had a, a meltdown. Ah. So once we got through the fear and I could just cut the hair gently with the knife, he still had that 
tension in his body. And it was kind of an interesting thing to watch that he tolerated me cutting his mane, but I had to go slow and take small amounts of hair to do it. Mm -hmm. And by the time I kind of worked my way up the neck, all of his mane hair was sticking straight up. (laughs) He was so tight through his neck. It just pulled his mane hair straight into a mohawk. Like I just had to stop because it wasn't laying down anymore. Interesting. the tighter and tighter he got through his neck, the more the hair was just sticking straight up. follicles all closed up. I guess. And so the tail hair doesn't really do that. The main hair will respond a little bit to the muscle use through the neck. But the tail is really responding to the bony use of the coccyx part of the spine which is directly related to how the pelvis is being used and the sacrum and the lumbar. So it's kind of a whole hindquarter issue. And it's interesting to watch. And I think because when we read that research paper, I think the diaphragm and basically what they called the tail head muscle. This, there, it's the same type of muscle fiber. Yeah, those were the only two that were pure stabilizing muscle Mm -hmm. fiber types in the horse's body. And I thought, isn't that interesting? The diaphragm and the, the, it's still, it's over the coccyx, but in the hindquarter before the hair of the tail is where that muscle is. And um, I thought, isn't that interesting? So they, they may use their tail a little bit like a cat does, sort of to counterbalance as a quadruped. I mean, not as extensively as a cat uses their tail, but there might be a little something to it as a rudder or a counterbalance or a... Yeah, I'm very curious about it because like I was sharing earlier, the horse that I've been longlining for nine months, um, I think we said it in the last podcast, I had a really good rider get on him and she said this is the most balanced horse I've ever gotten on so the owner was in town and we proceeded to ride him three or four days in a row and we started to see changes and he was actually instead of keeping his tail neutral he was actually moving his tail and getting it stiff the more times we rode him and moving it like side to side. So every time, like if you turn one direction, it would go the other way. If you turned, you know, it was I just go, well, isn't that interesting? Because that habit he came with, he did that when he was first here and didn't have any balance. So and then when you worked with him on the long reins, the tail started straightening out. The tail, and not only straightening, but like I said, um, becoming available to move it's it there's something about locking it for stability at some point when they're not front to back left right balanced and he you know and it i just found it fascinating that even after three or four very short rides at the walk we weren't doing anything more than walking that you know, the tail was showing me some signs of what? I don't know, but I just no- happened to notice it. Yeah. And I look at it, even if I don't know precisely what it means for that unique horse, because bodies can compensate in all kinds of ways. What I do know is that tail flipping left and right is, and holding there, right? Maybe changing That's what he was with doing. A, yeah. either one side all the time or it flips to the opposite side of Mm -hmm. the direction of travel or whatever it's a sign of struggle I go let's just put it in a good way to look at it I go uh, that's a good way to look at it yeah it just tells me that the horse is struggling with their balance and they're having to tighten muscles because they're losing the skeletal stability and with what you're describing that's not that unusual during rehab to have a huge change in the groundwork and it will transfer to the riding, but even though that horse has a better skeletal coordination, mm-hmm. as soon as we add, you know, weight 
to the back, the rider, right. even, even a very good rider, that's just the equivalent to us lifting weights. So I go, I might be strong until I pick up, until I go to work out with 10 pound weights or 25 pound weights, right? right? So I can lift my arm just fine. But now if you give me a barbell, that's a little tougher. Right. It was and just I, amazing to me in that short amount of time. Right. The changes that we saw. And luckily, and, we're all very aware participants, you know, and I think it's a big eye opener because mm -hmm. to see horses fatigue from what we consider light work when they're mm -hmm. when they're strengthening their core muscles that we can't see, I right. go just to change the skeletal coordination is a global change throughout the body right. of muscle use. And what that means is the muscles that support the new and better skeletal coordination, they might have been super tight. They might have been atrophied mm -hmm. and very weak. And so that's why they run out of steam with a little bit of riding is because those muscles that are supporting the new coordination aren't very strong. Right. And I go, just like us, if it's not strong, it you're going to really tire out faster. So that looking at the the thing of the tail set and time frame of riding is, do we really realize how fatiguing it can be? And does the horse are are is the horse showing signs of concentric contracting to get through the activity? And that's what that tail going off to one side or yeah. the other really is because the con concentric contraction, shortening the muscle and contracting is what sort of where you can see the underside of the tail, right? Where right. the tail kind of flips off to one side or the other. That's related to the muscle use in a shortening contraction. So that tells you the stability of the hindquarter is compromised. The horse might be dropping the back a little bit. That axial stability left to right might not be stable because that shortening effect is not just the tail. It's also the muscles on top of the hindquarter and through the back and even right. through the neck. You can kind of watch it go up and down the body. Oh, and that, that makes, you know, the tensegrity model of it all and fascia, how fascia is is an organ itself we're kind of finding out it, yeah. you know that it's not just a piece of tough fiber that it actually Connected has tissue mm -hmm. yeah it's actually got memory and and things like that that you know you can't you can't take away that that tail position and the, it's affecting the neck also exactly it's yeah. one big chain of and events and what's under the saddle you know yeah it's all connected and i I look at it kind of like a the energy moves through it, yeah, forward like or backward, right? And and so we sort of see the ripple effect of that connection, and the tail. I mean, nothing of in a horse's tail use is definitive. I I, I go it well, could that, mean that, that we know of. If anybody's got a paper out there, we'd love to see it. That would be interesting. Yeah, I'm because that's a good one. When we consider our horse's tail is a longer extension of the spine than we have. We have a stubby little tail like a Manx, right? And the horses have this long coccyx. Long continuation, yeah, that we don't. And it's a disconnect in my mind, too. I really, you know, this horse brought it to my attention this weekend. Like, wow, you know, I can't stop my thinking that it's just the hind end. That's a continuum of the spine that I keep forgetting to include. Yeah. It doesn't go body hair, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that spine continues into the tail right. for about a third of the tail. Right. And that uh, is the same thing, like I said earlier about humans connecting the pelvis to the spine. Um, it's yeah. a big deal. It makes a huge difference in movement patterns. No, and people kind of know, like with tails, swishing the tail, right? When a horse is mad, That's they swish true. the tail or they swish flies, which are two different types of swishing. 
because if they're swishing flies, it's a very soft movement, unless right. one of the flies is biting hard, right? But when they swish their tail- And it's a very, tail, how do I say it? Everything's in length when they swat at a fly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's relaxed, it, long there's muscles. There's no contraction at the top yeah. kind of thing. And when they swish the tail because they're angry, there's like a tenseness and a, a quicker, tighter movement. Yeah, I agree. When, and so, like I said, it's in a, it's part of the it, body language expression of what they're feeling or if they're struggling. And we, if we read it that way, it just gives us information in kind of a general way. And maybe there's, if the tail is constantly off to the right, maybe I want to compare the back muscles left to right. Maybe I want to, maybe I want to put that tape on top of the hindquarters and go, which is, is there a high side, low side? And Especially um, in movement, because I haven't seen a saddle or rider on this horse. So th things became very visual to me. Um, yes. W watching the rider go ride away from me. I was like, oh, I'm not seeing that in my daily work. Now, because I've got another visual with a saddle and a rider, I'm, yeah. I'm seeing things I need to work on. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. And so people think if the horse moves their tail at all, switches, swishes their tail, that that's a sign the horse is angry. But I go, I've had horses in rehab, like you were describing, when they have sort of chronically bad posture when the hindquarters have been disengaged for a while and are very unstable and the back is very tight and the spine's pushing down, I find they have a very tight tail. It's not easy to lift the tail up and down. Right. It's as tight as the back muscularly. Right. And that tightness, when they're working in rehab, even on the long reins or sometimes lunging, groundwork, riding, it doesn't matter. As the back starts changing, and they start to get their balance skeletally, which allows all the muscles of the top line to start to let go of that shortening contraction and excess holding, then the tail goes crazy as if they were kind of angry. But I I go, I wonder if that change of muscle tone, theoretically, you're restoring circulation because tight muscles... True tight muscles really compress and it decreases the circulation to the muscle. And when muscles restore natural suppleness, you know, even if they're not working, they should feel kind of like raw meat if they're not working, right? That's a supple muscle. And so when we put our hand on a horse's tail and it feels tight, like burnt steak, then it's, <laughs> it's tight, right? And when it feels soft, like raw meat, that's telling us about the amount of chronic tension or not that right. the horse is holding pretty much through that chain of muscle from the tail to the, to the head. And so as horses are stabilizing their backs, coming out of a dropped back and starting to stabilize the pelvis and gain some skeletal stability, I'll see a horse completely soft, content, and focused, and that tail is just going bananas. Like they'll wow. just, they will violently flag their tail and swish it around, and it doesn't last long. But I, I kind of wonder as the muscle tone's changing and the circulation is increasing, mm -hmm. if it doesn't feel like pins and needles. Like when, or we... an unwinding, I'm thinking. I wonder if it's some sort of release, unwinding. Yeah, or maybe they're doing that to facilitate more release mm -hmm. of tension. I don't right. know. Right. I don't know. But it. I go, they're definitely not angry. So I go swishing. No, I don't see the anger either. Swishing the tail doesn't always mean they're angry. It can. It can, but... especially if you're gouging them with spurs or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to kind of look at the whole picture. You got to get the yeah. whole thing going. So. Yeah. <laughs> But that's why I go, you can't say a horse with a little bit of a cup tail is always lifting their back. I, think I agree with that. The one thing I can say always, always, always is that backwards J is a terrified horse. 
that the that horse is not happy. Yeah, that's a terrified horse, which means the back is down, the hindquarters are disengaged, and you're probably dealing with safety issues at that point. Right. So that backwards J is a big deal. And um, but other than that, all the different sort of swishing of the tail, uh, cupping of the tail, holding it off to one side, curling it left, right, all those different uses. I go, it, it gives us some information or maybe gives us a hint to start exploring something on this side of the body or explore something else. Yeah. But it doesn't ever indicate anything that's reliably specific. Not to my knowledge, but I just, I see, I saw that change in that horse this weekend and I thought, hmm, we need to talk about that. The other thing I do see with the tail is, and I want to talk maybe in the next episode about impulsion with horses, because I think yeah. that's another kind of misunderstood topic that's directly related to hindquarter engagement. Right. And it comes like tail use comes into that. Because when a horse really balances forward propulsion with the ability to stabilize forward propulsion, that's impulsion. And I always see in the trot, it's one of my favorite things to see, is when a horse is really doing that quite well, there's a gentle sway back and forth through the tail, left to right. But it it's just... gentle. It's staying in length. You know, it's just like a rhythm of a metronome. It's actually in the rhythm of the trot. You could look at their yeah. tail like a little metronome. Yeah. Just sort of gently swaying back and forth more than anything right. else. And it's pretty minimal. It's not huge. But whenever I see a horse kind of mostly during trot, I'm not sure why that is either, but the tail will be loose in the walk and the canter but during trot, it has this lovely little side to side sort of sway. And it's something that does kind of reliably speak to that balance between braking and pushing or self-propelled and self-controlled motion mm -hmm. where the horse really has a rhythm going, whether it's slow or fast. I'm not looking at speed or stride length at all. I'm just looking at rhythm. And when the horse finds their unique rhythm, that's one of the side effects I see is- Interesting. Is I'm going to have to look for that. Soft. I think we just put a video in our group of exactly okay. that. I'll have to share on the, um, I'll have to share somewhere. Maybe Share somewhere. The... <laughs> sure, somewhere, maybe on the Facebook page. Okay. But um, but yeah, that gentle sort of left to right swaying. And I it always kind of made me wonder if that's why people think the back needs to move like move. that. I know. I go, I go, the tail does. And I think it's a muscular thing. I don't think it's a bony thing because mm. the bones of the tail are not really moving. The bones of the tail are sort of staying centered, but there's almost like an, an S pattern of energy that's coming through the muscles. I wonder if it's like energy displacement, like sending it out, reverberation kind of thing. Or maybe anyway. it's the way the energy actually moves. Like I Yeah, go, that's what I was thinking. I, I go, I can't do the math. And, you know, physicists rarely talk to functional anatomists. And so That's I true. go, it's hard to explain, but the, the tail bones are not moving left to right. It's like the muscles are managing the energy. It's about an energy that's coming through the body. Mm -hmm. It's like a wave. Yeah. And it's very soft. It's a lovely little use of the tail that I adore. And, um, it always does go hand in hand with the horse sort of nailing their unique tempo yeah. and cadence in the trot, which, you know, maybe they had to shorten the stride. Maybe people look at it and they say it doesn't have enough energy. It's too slow, right? Or rarely do we see it too fast. It's usually on the slower side. Right. But the horse, what that means is the horse is able to push forward without falling forward. So they push and then they resist the push. And that's what prevents the body weight from overloading the front legs. 
So that's kind of how it's related to that balance and has everything to do with pelvic stability, mm. which yeah. is engagement, and the horse not dropping the back. Maybe the horse isn't lifting the back enough, but mm -hmm. the spine is stable left to right and the horse is heading that direction. The back is right. lifting to some degree. Yeah. Even if it's not a lot. Yep. So other than that, I mean, I, I when people nerve the tails, which means basically a nerve block, so the horse can't move the tail, I find that very cruel. Because in the show ring, that can wow, happen. Wow, that blows my mind. Yeah, because I tail... Didn't, I didn't even think of that going on. I have a horse that someone did that to before my wow. client had this horse. And it's very sad. He can't swat flies. <gasps> oh, so it's like a permanent oh, nerve yeah. damage. Like, yes. I mean, I know they break it. Some Isn't it some breed show that they break the tail? I don't know if they still do that. Yeah, draft horses, they still dock the tail, which is like dogs. You're basically cutting off Oof. part of the bony part. <clears throat> um, most horse breeds, I can't think of another one that docks the tail other than draft horses. You guys, right. I'm sure will comment if I'm wrong. Yeah, let us know. But um, kind of out of that loop. But nerving, they call it nerving the tail. Okay, I've heard of blocking the feet. So maybe it's the same. It is. It's like blocking the feet, but blocking the nerving feet is the temporary. Feet. Right. And nerving the tail means basically taking, destroying the nerves in the tail. So that when you show that the horse doesn't swish his tail when you spur him too hard. Yeah. Okay. Can't go and there. It's really kind of cruel, like I said. I because can't go there. Yeah. This poor horse, you know, in retirement now can't swish flies off of himself. Interesting. And his tail has a permanent kind of crooked pattern to it where you mm -hmm. can you can really see the atrophy of the muscles as well. And so the bones protrude a little bit because there's no circulation there without the nerves. Right. So okay. that's, but other than that, on a healthy tail, I think if we just look at it as information in general. Right. That's how I saw it. It's like, what am I, what do I need to, I need to look more closely at the connection of that. Yeah. You know, nothing that, that's good or part of it. Yeah. Yeah, but if the tail muscles are not soft, and if there's not a lot of mobility, that would indicate tight muscles, right? Or if it's doing weird things, right? then it is related to the use of the whole axial skeleton, but we might not know the details yet, but we know there's something, there's something. to suss out, right? Yeah. something we could look at. Right. But that's, I know you brought it up a couple of times and I'm like, yeah, tales do tell tales yeah. of some sort. <laughs> there is something to that. There, we have to continue past the hind end and see what the tail's doing. Yeah. And just realize that that is a connection to the spine. It's still the right. spine. It's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the part of the spine that goes past the feet. It's just not a swishy thing. Right. And it's not all hair and fluff. Right. Right. And even the horses with massive manes and tails, I go, you might have to look a little bit, but there's a bony part in there somewhere. Right. And you can almost feel the blunt. It's like a soft blunt end. It is. When I you can find feel the end of the horses, spine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is these, these long coccyx or what we, right. we have it's too, a tail part of the bone. body. Yeah. So I don't know what else to add about tails, but. Oh, I'd love to hear people's thoughts on that. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to keep it short because how much more can we talk about tails? <laughs> so hope you enjoyed it. Um, do post corrections if we got some of this, if you question some yeah, of this stuff. Yeah, I'd love to or... hear more feedback on it. Or share your experiences in the comments below. Yeah, that would be great. But I think the one thing to wrap it up that we have both seen is understanding skeletal coordination 
and understanding how to go about guiding changes at that deep level, I see horses change the use of their tail frequently. Yeah. That's the, what I was seeing in this horse this weekend. Yeah. And the better the balance gets, the softer the tail muscle gets, the less defensive the horse is about being touched there. And it's it just sort of centers and softens as the balance improves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So that is it. It's not stuck to one side for no reason. Exactly. Yeah. Be, be more curious. Check it out. Yeah. Look how that goes from the tail forward through the yeah, pelvis. Yeah. Like I did. I watched the back. The, I watched the rider with saddle ride away from me. And, you know, I was seeing one sided rocking. And I went, oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So was the tail on the high side of the asymmetry or on the low side of the asymmetry high. on the high side? Yeah. Yeah. That's and what, I, that's what cued me in. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember seeing that, but you know, I could have a, I could not have been paying attention to that. Yeah. It just came to my attention. I was like, wow, look at that. I didn't notice that was going on. Yeah. And that's what I find most common is the tail goes to the high side and that's what makes me suspect it's the muscular tightness it's of, just tight to maintain stability mm -hmm. yeah that the tail muscle moves the tail right and kind of goes with where the body needs stability rather than where the excess weight is going which is always that's the opposite size so yeah, let us know people <laughs> yeah Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yep. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Horse Geeks podcast. Thanks. Bye, everybody.